Hello everyone, welcome back to Malware Analysis Crash Course. In my previous video, I show how to create a Yara rule to classify the malware sample. In this video, I am going to show how to perform static malware analysis. Without further delay, let's get into the video. My sincere apologies guys uh, for delay in posting the static malware analysis. I was quite busy with other projects, I was unable to make it uh, on time and I'll ensure this is not going to happen yet and I'll, I'll keep posting the videos on regular basis. I'm so sorry for it. So let's go and see how to do static malware analysis. Before starting static malware analysis, just let us understand what is static malware analysis. Static analysis is a process of analyzing the malware binary without execute. The objective is to extract IOC, indicator of compromise, information from the malware. This will help us get an idea of what type of malware and its malware function. So in malware analysis, what we're going to understand is, first of all, we're just going to understand file type. So we have to identify the file type is extremely important as it is help us to identify the target host mission, whatever what is designed that malware is designed for which operating system or what kind of vulnerability. So that is a main important we will understand target by analyzing the file type. Hash value to identification the malware file content, what that malware content of it. Stings. It gives us valuable information about the malware functionality. Unpacking. So basically attackers may use archive packing to hide themselves from their identifications. P header. It contains all the important and necessary information required by the OS to execute the executable. So basically the malware contains the information where to execute to load the executables and load the executable DL and where execution have to begin. Analyzing the PE header, we can understand how this malware works. So for my static malware analysis, I'm using a Flare VM. I have made a video how to set up a Flare VM for my, your malware analysis lab. I'll be giving the link in the description, please check out. I have already downloaded the malware samples from this website and as per malware best practices, all this malware is zipped and it is password protected. Before starting the malware static analysis, please handle the malware with care because there is a chance it can infect your host machines and it can there is a chance of it affect your entire network also so always handle the malware with careful and have a proper sandbox environment to do your malware analysis investigation so first of all we will be extracting this information and we will analyze first of all we will try to gather the file type and we will see what is the uh, hash value and we will do a comparison of hash values and we'll try to understand what that uh, malware samples are containing it and we will evaluate the stings and if suppose these malwares are unpacked it we will go into extract it and we going to see detailed about this malware and we'll see what kind of stings or what is the functionality about it and also we will be just looking the PE headers and we will analyzing on it i'll be working with a complete and I'm super excited to start. Let's go and start on it. So as a first step, we will go and extract this samples. So I'm extracting here and the password is infected. Okay, so the first file is extracted. So let's go and identify what is this file. So I'll be dropping the sample in X editor. So this is a 4D5A. So basically this MZ says it is a executable and you can see this, this is program can be run, cannot be run in a DOS. And uh, you can see certain this R data, R sync. So basically if you are seeing this things, this MZZ, 
and uh, you are seeing this kind of exit so basically this is our executables and synchronous so this is what says it so it is a malicious we will narrow down so we have identified this file this is a designed for so you can see this program cannot be run in a dos mode so it's basically designed for windows and those things so and you can understand from mz word 4 d 5 a it is a executable exe file malware so let's go and narrow down more we'll drop this file in hash cal and we'll try to extract the hash value okay so i'm just taking the md5 and let me go to total virus let me go to the search and let me paste this hash value so it's again doing the scanning of this hash value so it's just doing the comparison the hash value with the, all the uh, engines and so that it will take some time uh, but we'll get the result okay out of 69 engine 47 machines engines has detected this is a malicious file so let's go and see the details so this is the other one and you can see this this is a executable ms window so the operating system target operating system is windows machine and it's executable visual studio c++ file type is windows 32 exe and the file size is 2.27 mb and it's once you executed it is downloading mini download.exe some files and it is converting all the outputs and and it's downloading few more explorer and it is executing so these are the signatures and certified who these things so it's have a dot text dot r data dot r things and those things and all so we we'll keep seeing this one so let us go and uh, see what is info what is this r data data r dot sync and everything quickly we will see that one so dot code dot text it's basically says that if you have this session it is says that executable code so this function will have an executive functionality dot code dot text if you are seeing it it's executable dot data so basically it stores the data in a read or write way so that whatever is there is stored it r dot data it stores the data just a read only i data stores the importable table so whatever it's importing it stores it over there and it will execute it and pro I means this way dot e data store the exported data so if you are exporting something it will store somewhere and it will be sending to the part dot rsc stores the resource strings and icons so if you are seeing this 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 is what the function of if you are seeing this session names over there let go back to the flare vm so now we have analyze the hash value and we have analyzed the file type as well so you can do one more thing is you can drop if you suppose you want you can do you can drop it this malware sample into xc info.exe so here also you can see all the informations whatever we are saying so you can here you can see that session e.x so basically it's an executable and you can see the first file bytes of it and subsystem is window GUI and uh, so you can see that this is again it is not compressed so it's not packed that's what you say so you don't need to uh, encrypt and uh, it's not means the hacker the respective attacker is not uh, uh, packed to this one so we will get all the informations and uh, this is again signature is microsoft visual c plus plus one it is again built it over so we have all the informations if you want we can go to p and we can do more about researches over there what is the headers and uh, what code it is designed it yeah you can see our data so basically our data is there so yes you can do more researches on not worthy and uh, let me quickly drop this file in the pu studio so even whatever the uh, information we just see that you can see the you can run it in the same to pu studio also and you can uh, analyze it as what is there so here you can see it says the file type is executable and it is 32 bit 
and uh, you can see that the uh, md5 sha values and the first four bytes is 4d5 z mz and it, the description is so it seems like it is this is developed in a china and uh, you can do a more analysis on like uh, what resources is there so where it is executing files means all this uh, library files you can see it so even here here you can see the virus total one so you can instead of running there you can see this also where which how many detections so same thing 47 mean, machines are detected and you can narrow down more when everything's and all and even you can see the dos headers and those things at all and you can check the so libraries again it is waiting so that we will once it is calculated we will know uh, where the execution complete malware workflow so where the dlc execution dlc will be loading and everything and all so it will take some time it's again loading on it uh, in this meantime we will see the uh, other informations like a uh, few informations i'll want to share it so let's go back to the slide and if you are seeing this mz setter dos header defines that file is actually executable binary so if you are seeing this words in a hexadecimal or p studio or something else right so you can understand this is an executable binary so dos tower if program cannot be run in dash mode right so print message when does not so exist for compatibility so there is a chances of running in the so this is this is what you gives information p file header signature define the executable as a p so that's what we said it sees like executable executable this file is executable image option header store the important information like subsystems and entry points so where to execute and those things and all its session tables completely will have how to load the executable into memory so it will have all the information so it's basically it gives the workflow of it sessions so as i said that sessions earlier slide we said our data are those right so it sees like where the session code to be executed where to data be stored and all the things informations will be in a session so let's go back to the uh, flare vm i hope uh, then so still it is not completed still it is calculating so in the meantime we will see that uh, what is this hexta string values and all we will see there are list of file signatures so these are the signatures when you see this one right so you can understand if it is d4 c3 btta is there right so it can be a pcaf file so basically it's a pcaf file uh, if you are seeing this value 53514c6 these values are there it is basically it can be a sqlite db or sqlite these are extension one and uh, if you are seeing this uh, hexa value it uh, for example bbafeca it can be a dbf file and uh, if you are seeing 1f90 so it can be a tar basis one so that's how we are calculating one for example if you are the 4d right so what we discussed right 4d Phi A, so you can see this 4D Phi A is an executable file. So I'll be giving this uh, link in the description. So you, it will be useful for you guys when you uh, evaluate what kind of file types, right? So using this uh, value comparisons, you can understand whether it is a executable file or it is a, a PDF or JPEG. For example, FFD8 and all right, right? Uh, FF d8 ffe this is one will be a jpeg jpeg files so it will be in a, because there are malware analysis right so there is no no need to be always to be a set of exe file there is a chances of it can be a hidden in the using a technography it can be a jp file but it is hidden over there so using this header first byte hexa you can understand the file type analysis so basically this will help you to uh, understand or uh, evaluate what is a file type okay so finally it is done so we can see that uh, so what are the strings are loading so you can see this is a strings are there so it is done sp dot mat exe and you can and you can see this uh, so thus and even you can check the functions and you can see these are the dls actually this is all blacklisted dls and it is again loading shell 32.dl wintel.dl wsl underscore 32 dot dl so these are the functional actually it's executing on this things so when the function is there executing 
So ordinarily, this is what will happen, but a blacklist, this is all blacklisted one. So these are files are executing and loading and it is uh, yeah executing as you said, right? So P header, we can know where the files will be loading and what are the these these are, these uh, deals are supporting and uh, it helps the exe to execute it and the strings it can be have more data on it you can uh, and you can go more detail about it and you can understand whether there is any url it's whether you are disconnecting on it so you can analyze more on the strings and uh, it will it can be uh, gives you information of ip address url uh, all the information stings you can have to go back means it's have a hundred and seven I means uh, eleven thousand seven hundred and forty four lines are there values are there so you have to go by one by one and you can understand what is this there so you can see this mb4z so it's basically executables and uh, it have a lot of information so you can narrow down but i hope you guys got the point uh, uh, how to uh, analyze the strings and understand what is uh, it's actually what is this malware contained support so in strings only you can see understand ip address and what from where it is downloading the uh, malware zaka and top of that it's downloading any exe file or it is communicating with the blacklisters one so you can in the string value it's basically give the uh, information about what malware contains about all the things as well so Let's go back and quickly uh, go to the slide. So file types, yes, it's help us to uh, understand what is a target. So, and it's also help us what kind of type of file it is and uh, it's a target OS and targeted for which machines, types, hardware, and those things are all there. So for fi evaluating the file type, you can use hexa editor and the hash cal, it's again, it's you help you to find the what is a malware content so, and uh, using that and using the total virus total, you can uh, just space the hash values and you understand uh, what kind of malware, how many search instances are identified and you can understand more on about the malware of it. And stings again, to analyze the stings, you can use P sting or sting uh, 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 shell extension on it so that uh, you can understand the malware functionalities about it to unpack it you can use a, a upc package um, and uh, for p header analysis still you can use the uh, p studio and you can understand what files are executable and where it is loading the functionalities and those things as well there that's it guys I hope now you have a good understanding uh, how to do a static malware analysis. So in my next video, I'll be showing how to do a dynamic malware analysis. So in this video, I showed static. So it's quite similar, but uh, in the static, we will be uh, without executing the uh, malware we just evaluating manually in dynamic malware analysis basically it's a behavior analysis we will run the malware and we will capture what and all it's happening over there and we will do investigations on this that's one so that is the dynamic malware analysis so stay tuned for it if you like this video hit the like button comment if you have any questions and suggestions if you think video is useful please consider to subscribe the channel show your support by giving like comment share and subscribing follow me on social media platform thank you all for watching this video signing off now see you soon bye take care